Alright, welcome back to class, everyone. Ready for another day of Blackout Academy. Hope you guys are ready, because this one's going to be great. Who else here has been shopping at Ikea? Went to one the other day. Really nice meatballs, actually. You just get those for lunch. Anyway, today we're going to be talking one that's not quite your average Ikea. This one keeps on going. And I know the regular ones feel like they can keep on going forever, but this one really does. Welcome everyone to SCP-3008. Open your textbooks and listen the hell up. SCP-3008. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. The retail park containing SCP-3008 has been purchased by the Foundation and converted into Site <laughs> All roads leading or passing by Site <laughs> have been redirected. The entrance to SCP-3008 is to be monitored at all times, and no one is to enter SCP-3008 outside of testing, as permitted by senior researcher. Humans exiting SCP-3008 are to be detained and debriefed prior to the administration of amnestics, dependent on a, upon the duration of their stay on 3008. A cover story may need to be generated prior to their release. Any other entities exiting SCP-3008 are to be terminated. Description SCP-3008 is a large retail unit previously owned and branded as IKEA. A popular furniture retail chain, a person entering SCP-3008 through the main entrance and then passing out of sight of the doors will find themselves translocated into SCP-3008-1. This displacement will typically go unnoticed, as no change will occur from the perspective of the victim. They will generally not become aware until they try to return to the entrance. Dash 1 is a space resembling the inside of an IKEA furniture store, extending far beyond the limits of what could physically be contained within the dimensions of the retail unit. Current measurements indicate an area of at least 10 kilometers squared. No visible external term with no visible external terminators detected in any direction. Inconclusive results from the use of laser rangefinders has led to the speculation that the space may be infinite. Dash one is inhabited by an unknown number of civilians trapped within prior to containment. Gathered data suggests they have formed rudimentary civilizations within SCP-3008-1 including the construction of settlements and fortifications for the purpose of defending against SCP-3008-2. Dash 2 are humanoid entities that exist within Dash 1. While specifically resembling humanoids, they possess exaggerated and inconsistent bodily proportions, often described as being too short or too tall. They possess no facial features and in all observed cases wear a yellow shirt and blue trousers, consistent with an IKEA employee uniform. Dash 1 has a rudimentary day-night cycle determined by the overhead lighting within the space, activating and deactivating at times consistent with the opening and closing times of the original retail store. During the night, instances of Dash 2 will become violent towards all life forms within Dash 1. During these bouts of violence, they have been heard vo to vocalize phrases in English that are typically variations of, quote, the store is now closed, please exit the building, unquote. Once the day begins, Dash 2 instances immediately become passive, begin moving throughout Dash 1, seemingly at random. They are unresponsive to questioning or to verbal cues in this state, though will react violently if attacked. Dash 1 is known to have one or more exit lo exits located within though these exits do not appear to have a fixed position, making it difficult to leave Dash 1 once inside. Using any other door besides the main entrance to enter the structure or breaking through the wall of the retail unit leads into the non-anomalous interior of the original store. Since containment began, 14 individuals have managed to exit SCP-3008. Following extensive debriefing, all individuals have been administered amnestics and released. Incident S Incident 3000-1 At on 2000 A human male exited 
SCP-3008, followed by 10 seconds followed 10 seconds later by an instance of SCP-3008-2. The Dash-2 caught and killed the man before itself being terminated by armed response personnel. This incident represents the only time an instance of a Dash-2 has been seen exiting the SCP-3008. A full autopsy on the corpse was performed. See Dash-2 autopsy log for more details. The man was carrying an Ikea-branded journal, seemingly to document his time in Dash 1, described below verbatim. So, I'm writing this to document what I can only assume is my sudden descent into insanity. I can't possibly be that bad at a, a navigator. And yet, as I write this, I've been trapped in Ikea for two days. I haven't seen another person in the entire time I've been here. I thought it was a prank at first turn the place into a maze, get all the people out, and see how long it takes me to get lost. Then everyone has a good old laugh. I realized that if that wasn't the case when I tried to backtrack. Everything had changed, so I ended up lost. Instead of the exit, it was just a row of... just row after row of bookcases. So I'm trapped in Ikea. Sounds like a setup of a bad joke. The lights went out at 10pm, nearly gave me a fucking heart attack. A loud electrical thunk sound into the pitch blackness. The place is full of beds, though, and my phone has a torch on it. But no damn signal. So I found a bed and went to sleep. I spent most of the day trying to find my way out, no luck. I did find a restaurant serving those meatballs, though, so at least I won't starve. That's probably the punchline to that joke. Anyway, they were still warm and fresh. But I hadn't seen anyone around who could have cooked them made my way back to the beds before the lights cut out again, since when it's too dark... <clears throat> before the lights cut out again, since it's too dark to search for them off. It's 9.10 a.m. now, and the lights came back on a while ago. I'm sure I've searched the entire area around where I came, and... <clears throat> I've searched the entire area around where I came in, and now the exit is obviously not there. So I'm going to pick a direction and hope for the best. Day three of my magical Ikea mystery adventure. If I wasn't sure that there was something seriously weird about this place before, I am now. Walked for three hours or more or less in a straight line. Insert Ikea joke here before I came across a ladder next to one of those huge stocking shelves that they have here. Climbed up to get my bearings, and it looks like this place just stretches on forever. Like that scene from The Lion King, except instead of trees and grass, it was just shelves of tables and crap. I did see a person moving not too far away, though, so I headed over. Though it was a, thought it was a staff member at first. It was wearing the uniform. And hell, maybe it was. Maybe freakish seven-foot-tall monsters with long arms, short legs, and no faces are just the kinds of thing that they won't work in a super Ikea. Damn thing completely ignored me, though. With no eyes and no ears, I can't be sure if it knew I was there. Though, thought about shoving it or something to get its attention, but its hands were big enough to crush a watermelon, so I decided against it. It just kept moving along, and eventually I lost sight of it, so I decided to carry on the way I was going. Anyway, no comfy bed for me tonight. Looks like I've entered the improbable. Looks like I've entered the improbably hard and pointy table section of the store. Guess I'll have to make do with some bunched up tablecloths. Phone battery died during the day too. Didn't work anyway, but I feel like I've just lost some vital lifeline. You ever see one of those cartoons? They're just going through doors and hallways and they just pop out another door in the same hallway? That's how I feel right now. I've seen nothing but the same identical bookshelf for two days now. Just row after row after row of them. I, I mean, come on. I love books as much as the next guy, but this is excessive. I'm obviously still moving forwards, though. I can see the signs hanging overhead passing by. Too bad none of them say exit. Not sure who I was addressing that question to. Let's just say it was my practice for my autobiography I'm going to write when I get out of here. I'm calling it my perfectly normal trip to regular old Ikea. Finally found some other people. Yeah, turns out I'm not the only poor bastard trapped in here. Lucky for me, I guess. My sixth night here. Hm. Lucky for me, I guess. My sixth night here. 
Two of those staff things came at me in the dark. Different from the first one I saw, but still messed up. Heard them coming. They were saying that the store was closed and I had to leave the building. All nice and polite-like. I'm not sure which part of that was weirder, that they don't have mouths or that they were apparently trying to kill me when while well, they were saying it. Came at me like rabbit dogs, so I legged it, sprinting through the Ikea in, a dark, in the dark like a fucking madman. I saw when it cleared another stand of those giant stock shelves all lit up with torches and floodlights. They've built a whole town in here. Got a massive wall built out of shelves and beds and tables and whatever else. I swear to God, it was the most beautiful thing I ever seen. Anyway, I guess they saw me coming. Or maybe they heard my garlish, <clears throat> sorry, manly bellows of fear. Because they had a gate open with two people that were waving me in. Heard the staff thing slam the gate behind me after it closed. Still politely informing us all that the store was now closed and they wandered off, though. They wandered off eventually, though. They called the town Exchange, because that's what the sign was hanging from the ceiling directly above it. Exchange and returns, all lit up against the night using lights that they found plugged into power lines. And there are beds and food and people, over 50 wonderful people with regular sized limbs and a full set of facial features. It's now my seventh night here. And the first one to sp not to sp mm. And the first one not spent in darkness. A full week living in Ikea. There's probably a TV show in there somewhere. Now that I'm around other people, I'm starting to feel more normal. Maybe normal isn't the word, but after a week with only sound of my own footsteps for company, I was becoming increasingly sure that I'd gone nuts. That I'd tied up in some... That I was tied up in some padded room somewhere, banging my head against the wall. But no, I feel quite sane now. Thank you very much! Apparently, there are two, two other towns out there. Some with more people, some with less. I found the fairly mind-boggling. How can that many people go missing with no one noticing? Surely someone would have noticed that everyone who is goes into some Ikea seems to fucking vanish. Maybe it's not everyone. Maybe we're just the lucky ones. People here call those staff monster things the staff. Apparently they're fine during the day, minding their own business, walking the aisles, and all that. But as soon as the lights go out, they go fucking bonkers. So during the day, people go out and find food, water, and whatever else they need. Apparently there are restaurants and shops that are randomly get restocked. No one knows how, maybe the staff do it. Apparently they aren't very good at their job though, because the restocking sometimes takes a while. Which means the food needs to be rationed. Maybe if they weren't so busy chasing people around in the dark, they'd get more done. Anyway, when the night comes and the staff go nuts and everyone holds inside the walls, apparently it's same. Hmm, apparently it's the same everywhere in this place, wherever the place is. The Ur Ikea, hmm, the uh, Ikea, from wherever all the other Kias sprang, or maybe all. Maybe we're all still in the regular Ikea. This is all some fever dream brought up by mind-numbing boredom. Who knows? Been here ten days now. Most of the people I asked so they stopped keeping track a long time ago. One guy, one guy Chris, said he'd been here for years. Years! Apparently there are rumors of people who do manage to get out. And of the people who see the exit, only to have it vanish before their very eyes. I get the feeling not everyone believes that, but I do. And it explains how I got stuck in here in the first place. And it means, I mean, I mean, come on, staff monsters, row after row of endless, high-quality Swedish furniture? I don't know why they wouldn't find a disappearing door so hard to believe. Anyway, I went out scavenging for food at a nearby shop with Sandra and Jerry today. Once you learn the tr landmarks of this place, it's not so hard to navigate. The overhead signs help a lot, but there are others. Not too far in the distance, there's a huge section of those giant stock shelves that has collapsed against each other and hmm, it's collapsed against each other in a way way off in the east. At least I assume it's east anyway. Apparently IKEA doesn't sell compasses. Hmm. Maybe they were trying to break out through the roof. Lights up there must Lights up at night, so there must be people there. But it's apparently a few days walk, which means it must be miles away. So no one here really knows for sure. Apparently I got incredibly lucky sleeping out in the open for a week without getting ripped to bits by the staff. That's me. Lucky, lucky, lucky. 
We found some food in the shop. I guess the staff restocked it during the night, which was nice of them. I guess they restocked it during the night, which was nice of them. There was a telephone on the wall, so I figured I'd try it out. There was a voice on the other end, but it was just talking nonsense. Random words strung together with no real meaning. You ever see a video of someone with aphasia? Kind of surround. Kind of sounded like that. Didn't answer me when I spoke to them anyway. Sandra says all the phones in here are the same. I was thinking last night. The ceiling on this place is pretty high. As far as anyone can tell, it goes on forever. Shouldn't there be some kind of weather in here? I'm sure I read about the NASA building that was so big it had its own weather patterns. With clouds and stuff. This place is definitely bigger than that. And now I think I'm pretty sure I've never felt so much as temperature change in here. I'll add it to the grand list of weird bullshit. The staff attacked the exchange last night. Must have been 20 or 30 of them, all just asking us to leave the store calm as you like. While trying to smash the walls down with their bare hands. Apparently this happens pretty regularly, so everyone is prepared for it. Knives, for the re knives from the restaurants, low and more blades made into hatchets, a fire axe, one guy Wesson. One guy, Waysom, even made a functional crossbow. Anyway, the walls have holes in them, which I hadn't noticed before. Specifically. I hadn't, I hadn't noticed before. Specifically so we can stab out, of the st stab out at the staff when they attack. Took a couple of them down myself. They don't seem to bleed, which is weird, but they go down easy as a regular person once you stick holes in them. We had to haul the bodies away in the morning. Apparently the dead ones will attract more during the night, so we had to get away from exchange. We had a couple of those trolley things that they had moving the big boxes around, so we loaded them up and took them over to pick up. Apparently people just name everything in here after whatever sign is hanging overhead. Pickup was grisly. There were hundreds, maybe thousands of dead staff all piled up. There was no smell, which was a blessing. Apparently in addition to not bleeding, these things don't rot either. My curiosity got the better of me when I was unloading them. So I took a look at one of them. So I took a look at one of the more cut up ones. They're just skin. Something that looks like skin. All the way through. No muscle, no bone, no organs. They... And are they really even alive in the first place? They certainly seem like they have bones when they're moving around, pounding on the walls. I'm sure it felt more resistance than just skin when the knife was entering. And I'm sure it felt more resistance than just skin when the knife was en went in during the night. Maybe something happens to them when they die. Just one more thing on the ever-increasing list of weird shit that goes on in here, I guess. Something occurred to me after the staff attacked the other night. Every time you see a situation like this or TV or film, it's like the end of the world. Or everyone is trapped on an island or whatever. Once groups like ours start to form, people always seem to turn on each other. Fighting for food or dominance or whatever else. That hasn't happened here. Apparently people from other towns came, fry, came come by from time to time. Just to check in or occasionally to trade if they have some sort of thing that somebody needs or whatever else. But everything is always cordial. Friendly even. Maybe it's the threat of the staff, or perhaps the constant restocking of supplies in the shops when there's not much to fight over. Maybe people are just better than they're generally given credit for. It's a nice thought. I think I'll go with that one. A dozen people showed up at the gates this afternoon from a town called Trolleys. Apparently the staff broke down the walls and tore the town apart during the night. These twelve are the only survivors of over a hundred. We'll let them in, obviously. One more point in the humanity decency column. Later, I asked if anyone knew how many of these towns were out there, between us and the new folks. We managed to come up with over 20 names. 20 towns filled with people. And who knows how many beyond that. The motto for this place should be, how is this even possible? Surely someone, somewhere, must be looking for thousands of people that must be in here. I've been in here for a little over two months now. Not much changes, as it turns out. A new couple of people showed up. Same story as the rest of us. Nice little trip to Ikea, and suddenly they're trapped in Billy Bookcase's house of faceless weirdos. The staff attacked during... The staff ex attacked the exchange once or twice a week. 
We kill them and hold our bodies off. Sometimes they hurt. Sometimes they hurt some of us first. They killed a guy called Jared a couple weeks back. It was awful. Frankly, turns out regular humans still bleed in here. Even if the staff don't. We tried our best, but none of us are our doctors. Jared was a good guy. He deserved better. We all do. It occurred to me a couple days after that that none of us were really looking for a way out of here. I don't even know where'd we start. One of those quadcopter things with the cameras attached started buzzing past exchange today. I thought it meant that someone was finally looking for us. That help was on the way. Apparently it's not apparently it's not the first time this has happened though. Same thing happened a few months ago, and everyone is still here. No idea, no idea if it saw us. It didn't stop if it did. It just kept flying until we could no longer see it. A note. Based on recovery time of the journal, this entry appears to line up approximately with our first successful piloting of a drone inside SCP-3008-1. Analysis of footage shows a walled settlement under the sign labeled Exchange and Returns. Attempts to relocate the settlement failed. Origin of previously sighted drones is unknown. I started talking to people about the stuff they missed from home during dinner today. Probably not the best idea I've had. Everyone seemed pretty down after. A bunch of people have families, husbands, wives, kids, dogs. Franklin apparently has a pet llama. I thought I'm not... Though I'm not sure I'd buy that. But apparently some of the people here have some seriously old gaps in their knowledge. Three of them had never heard of the International Space Station. Two of them seemed to think it was Prime Minister. One of them seemed... You know, I'm just going to plug in a name there. Two of them seemed to think Dolly Parton was the Prime Minister, and one of them had apparently never heard of the Statue of Liberty. I believe them, too. They seemed just as confused as the rest of us. The more I thought about it, though, the more it started to explain a few things. What if the reason no one is looking for us is miss... What if the reason no one is looking for all us missing people is because we haven't all come from the same place? This is going to sound weird. Maybe that should be the motto for this place. But what if all the people here have come from different dimensions, realities, whatever you call it? I've seen enough TV shows to know the drill. Sarah comes from a place where there's no Statue of Liberty. They didn't launch the space station where Wal where Waze was from. If everyone here came from different places, even though they seem identical, that'd be the reason no huge missing persons panic, no mass search, would just be a blip, a single missing person in a world of non-stop news. Well, that was a fun train of thought. Just realized that yesterday was six month anniversary of my arrival here. I wonder if Ikea sells party hats. The routine around here has remained more or less the same. More new folks show up, one every couple weeks or so. Food supplies go up and down, but we never actually had any major shortage. Occasionally, we'd get a visitor from one of the nearby towns, usually checkouts or aisle 630. We'd check in with each other from time to time, occasionally trade supplies if someone gets particularly low on something. It's comforting in a way. A reminder that we're not alone in here. A small glimmer of civilization. Sometimes they bring medical supplies. Apparently, there's a pharmacy a few towns down from checkouts that is restocked every now and then. So they share out what they can. I've never heard of an Ikea with a pharmacy before, but at this point I wouldn't be surprised if someone stumbled in an Ikea Omega Harvesting Lab. It would certainly explain the staff. Oh. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if someone stumbled on an IKEA organ harvesting lab. It would certainly explain the staff. Speaking of our faceless jailers, their attacks have been getting worse lately. Three or four times a week now, with twice as many staff as there used to be. No idea where they're all coming from, or why the attacks have increased. We tried following one of them during the day a few weeks ago, me and Sarah. We wanted to see if they led back to a staff room or something. Didn't seem to go anywhere, though. Just randomly walked through the aisles. We hadn't seen return back or found anything. <laughs> we just randomly walked through the aisles. We had to turn back before we found anything. We've been reinforcing the walls, trying to arm ourselves better. Suddenly, no lack of materials to use. Wayson has been making more crossbows, but it's pretty slow going. 
Too bad I had key a dozen salt guns. Note. No new personnel have entered SCP-3008 site at the time span indicated in this entry. The attacks are getting bad now, most every night, and with so many staff that the bodies almost pile high enough for the others to climb the walls, I think we're in real trouble here. Exchange is... I think exchange is done. We got hit pretty bad last night. Not too many, not many casualties, but the wall is wrecked. We finally figured out why the attacks have been escalating too. A box of supplies had a chunk of one of the staff in there. No idea how it happened, but apparently a piece of one will draw them in just as well as a full body. Too late now, in any case. There's too many bodies for us to haul away and still have time to fix the wall before night. Candace has called a meeting. I suspect we'll talk about abandoning exchange. Maybe try and get the shelter at checkouts or something. It's already getting late, though. I don't think we'll have time to make it. Maybe some of us will, but I was fine for the last week when I was in the dark, after all. Then again, how often can I keep getting lucky? I'm only writing this for a sense of closure, I guess, for me, or from whoever one who finds it. If this is the final entry here, I hope whoever is reading this is doing so from outside of this place. My biggest fear? If I do die tonight, I'll just wake up here again in the morning. Note, this is the last entry. It is assumed that while attempting to reach the checkout settlement, he was separated from the rest of the group by pursuing SCP-3008-2 instance and happened upon the exit. Well, poor bastard. We're still trying to figure out better ways to get those guys out of there, but for now we got nothing. I, uh, I hope you guys found some kind of something in the lecture. If you did, well, God bless you. So, you all have a wonderful day. Class dismissed.